Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue with the book Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. And in this video, we are going to cover organizing files. To follow along, just head over to automatetheboringstuff.com and there you can access the book for free. You can also find the link in the description down below. If you prefer a physical copy of the book, there's also a link in the description down below to purchase the book. In the previous video, we already covered how we can create and write new files in Python. But aside from creating and writing files, typically we also want to organize our files. So for example, we may have a number of different files that we need to rename. For example, if we want to number our files, that may be something that we want to automate. And maybe we also want to compress files and folders and add them to a zip folder, for instance. We are going to cover how we can automate those steps using some Python modules. And the first step we are going to cover is to copy files and folders. We are going to use a Python module called Shuttle, which is short for Shell Utilities. And let's head over to our text editor to actually see how we can work with it. Let's start out with importing that module, Shell Utilities, and we are also going to import the OS module. We also need the path function, which we are going to import and then we are going to use a variable p, which is going to refer to our home path. We can now use the copy function out of the shell utils module that we imported. And the way this function works is that we first specify the source from where we want to copy a file and then the destination to which we want to copy our file. So here we are chaining the home path stored in the p variable to the spam.txt file that is the source. So inside of our home path, we have a file spam.txt. We need to make sure that we actually create that. And then we're going to copy that over to a folder called some folder, which is also in our home path. And here on Windows, the home path is just gonna be C users and then the username. So let's run this command. And now we can see we actually moved the spam.txt file over to some folder out of the path itself. So the path, of course, is C users Robin, in my case, so my username. And now we copy that over using this command. And we can also head over to the Explorer and have a look at some folder. And here we can see our spam.txt file, which indeed was copied over. We could also copy a file and then automatically rename it. In that case, we would just change the source destination. And here we would provide the name of the folder, a slash, and then the new file name and then we would copy over that text file and rename it while we copy it over. Now the copy function we just learned about works great for copying individual files over but if we want to copy a folder with all the contained subfolders and files there's another function we can use which is going to copy the entire tree inside of our folder and that function is called copy tree and it works similarly to the copy function the only difference is that we would pass a folder to it and then copy it to another folder and that's going to copy the entire content of that folder. So in our example here, we again work with the root folder, which again in this case here is C users and then my username. And here we have a folder called spam. And if you have a look at that, we can see inside of spam, we have another folder and inside of that folder, we have a text file. And what we want to do is we want to copy that folder and everything contained in it over to a new folder, which doesn't exist yet, which we call spam underscore backup. And this should copy the entire content of the spam folder. So let's run this command. And we see we get back spam underscore backup. Let's have a look at that folder. And if we look at that, we can see here we are inside of spam backup. And here again, we have our folder with the spam file inside of it. So congratulations, we just backed up our spam so it doesn't get lost. Rather than just copying files, we can also move those files. And for that, we can use the move function, which is also part of the shell utilities module. Here we have a file called bacon.txt, which we want to move over to the X folder. So as we run this program, we are going to move that file over to that folder. And if we then have a look, we can see that inside of our X folder, we indeed have this file moved over. And since we moved it rather than copied it, we of course removed the file from the source destination. Rather than just copying and moving different files and folders, we can also delete them. And for that we can either use functions which are part of the OS module 
or functions which are part of the shell utilities module which we've been using so far. And there are basically three different options. The first one is the unlink function which will delete a file at a specified path. We can then use the remove directory function which is not going to delete a file but a folder at the path and for that the folder needs to be empty. And if we want to remove a folder and everything contained in it, we can use the remove tree function, which is part of the shell utilities module. And we have to be quite careful because those function calls can be quite destructive. So we should always make sure that we are actually deleting the right files. Let's have a look at an example. Here we are using the first of those three options, the unlink function. And we are first importing the OS module and then also the pass function from the passlib module. And here we are basically checking that we are deleting all text files from the home directory. But we made a typo and rather than basically checking all the files that end in txt, we are checking for the ones ending in rxt. So that could lead to deleting some of the wrong files. And in order to avoid that or check what we would actually be deleting, we could do the following. And we can first of all uncomment the unlink call here and instead just print out all the file names. And now if we run our program, we can see we actually don't get anything back because there's no rxt file that would be deleted. So now we could adjust that and for example, change it to txt, save that again and run it one more time. And now we can see all the text files that exist and those would be the ones that would be deleted. If we want to go ahead, we then uncomment this line and we can remove our print statement but by running the print statement first, we made sure that we are actually deleting the correct files. Now, as mentioned, rather than using the unlink function to delete a file, we could also use the remove tree function to delete a folder and everything contained in it. But this function actually irreversibly deletes all the different files and folders. And therefore a much better way to delete those files and folders is to use a separate module, which is a send to trash module. So let's have a look at that. And in order to use this, we first of all need to install it. If you're using the Mu code editor, all you need to do is to head over to the gear icon at the bottom right side, and then to select third party packages. And here we can enter send to trash. And in order to install that, we can just confirm. Now we can see that has been installed. So let's confirm this. And now if we head over to our wrapper here, we can go ahead and import that module. Now, once we imported that, we are going to go ahead and we are going to open a new text file in append mode. So that creates a new text file for us. We can then use the write function here to add some content inside of that file. And then of course we need to close our file since we finished the operation. And now if we want to delete our file again, all we need to do is to call send to trash, the send to trash function on our send to trash module. And we need to pass the name of the file we want to delete to it. So in our case, we want to delete bacon.txt. So we're passing that as the argument to the send to trash function call. And that's going to remove our file. And again, that's a much safer way to use rather than some of the other functions like the remove tree function. And the reason why this function call is better in most cases is that those files are still recoverable. So if we make a mistake, we could restore it. But on the other hand, we are basically not freeing up disk space. So if you want to permanently lead a file and also free up the disk space, then we would have to indeed use those function calls inside of the OS module or the ones that are part of the shell utilities modules. Other than that, the send to trash module is really the one we want to use. Now let's say we want to rename different files in some folder and maybe also some different subfolders. For that, we can basically walk through a directory. So as an example, we have a folder here, a directory here called delicious. And inside of that, we have two separate folders, cats and walnut. And if we take a look at walnut, for example, we can see we have a file spam in here and we have another folder called butter. And that in turn has another text file in it. And if we want to print out the contents of the delicious folder, we could use some code to do that. And for that, we can use the walk function, which is part of the OS module. So in this case here, we are importing the OS module. And then we take a look at the folder name, the subfolder and the file names, which we get back from the walk function here. We print out the list of the subfolders 
and then we also print out what's inside of those files. So if we run our program, we get back what the current folder is, the delicious folder here. We see the subfolders inside of it, cats and walnut. And then we can see what's inside of the cats folder and what's inside of the walnut folder. So using this walk function here, we can easily have a look at a directory, what's contained in it, what the different subfolders are, and of course also what the files are inside of those subfolders. We can also work with zip files and for example read zip files. To do that we would import the zip file module and we also need the pass function. Again we are specifying the home pass and setting it to the variable p. And then we can call the zip file function on the zip file module and pass the pass to our zip files to it. So in this case we have a zip file called example.zip which is part of our home path and we are assigning that to the variable example zip. And now we can go ahead and we can call the function name list on example zip and that's going to give us back the different file names inside of the zip file. So for example cat names and Sophie. And then we can go ahead and we can call get info on the example zip here and pass a file to it. So for example cat names.txt which is part of the zip file. And now we can for example infer the file size in kilobyte and we can also check how large the file is once it's compressed. So if we have a look at the compressed size, we can see that it's significantly smaller than the file size itself. And at the end of course we need to close our zip file just as we did that before with different files we were reading. Let's have a look at an example project. And let's assume we have a long list of files that have an American date format, meaning we are going to start with the months, then a dash, the day, a dash and then the year and we want to change that to a European date format meaning we are going to put the date first then a dash then the month a dash and then the year. So in this case here we have a bunch of different files that are in an American date format. The date is either at the end of the file or somewhere in the middle or it could also be in the beginning and we also have some files in here that don't have a date in it as we can see here and we want to ignore those files. And let's assume we would have thousands of files if you want to manually rename those and basically switch the data around. That of course would be a lot of work. So therefore we can automate those steps. And to do that let's take a look at what the program would look like. We are going to import the modules we learned about. So the shell utility module, the OS module and also the Ray module. And then we need to figure out which files are actually using the American date format that we are going to use a regular expression and we are checking out the date pattern here we are checking basically for the text before the date we basically ignore that and then we check whether we have a one or two digits for the month if we have one or two digits for the day and then whether we have four digits for the year and here we're checking it should start with 19 or with 20 so 1900 or the 2000s and then of course we can have any text after the date once we have that regular expression here we are then looping over the files in the working directory from which we are actually calling our program here and we are searching over our date pattern so over the regular expression here and we are passing each and every file to it so we're basically searching through each file name and checking out which one of those have actually an American date in them and if a file doesn't have a date then we are just going to skip over that and continue looping and otherwise we are going to identify the different parts of the file name. For that we are using the group function here and we are basically identifying the before part, the month, the day, the year, the after part and then we are going to create the European style file name by switching around the order. So we have the day first now, then we have the month and then we have the year. We then need to construct the file path that we are going to use and at the end we are also going to print out the files that we renamed. So let's run our program and first of all we are going to check whether the renaming works as expected. So we're just printing out the newly created files that have a look. Uh, and we can see for example here this would rename the file 03 14 2022 to 14 3 2022. So we're basically switching the date and the month around here. That's looking good. And now that we checked that everything looks fine we can go ahead and uncomment this last line here and this is actually going to perform that change. We are using the move function here to basically replace the American date format with the European one. Let's run our program again. 
course we still get the same output. Now let's have a look at our folder. And now we can see that indeed that has been changed around. So now we have the date first and then the month. So that's a very effective way to rename a large number of files and in this case to change the date format. Let's have a look at the practice questions. The first question is what is the difference between the copy function and the copy tree function which are both part of the shell utility module. So the copy function here will just copy a single file while the copy tree function will copy an entire folder and everything contained in that folder. What function is used to rename files? So for that we would use the move function which is also part of the shell utilities module and that is going to rename the files and also move them. What is the difference between the delete functions in the send to trash module and the shell utilities modules? So the send to trash function will move a file or a folder to the recycle bin where it could be restored while the shell utility function will permanently delete files and folders. So therefore the latter one can be quite dangerous and we should generally use the send to trash function unless we need to really free up the storage space. In that case, we would use the delete functions of the shell utilities module. Zip file objects have a close method just like file objects close method. What zip file method is equivalent to file objects open method? So we briefly saw that before that we would call the zip file function, which is part of the zip file module, which is equivalent to the open function. And there's the first argument is the file name and the second argument is the mode to open the zip file. So similar to files, we would open them in read, write or append mode. In this video, we covered how we can organize files, how we can rename files, how we can copy files and also how we can work with zip files. When we do that, of course, there could be some errors that happen. And therefore, we are going to take a look at how we can debug our code in the next video. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next video.